I think we've all done it. You look down the uh, pike there and you see maybe some blue lights sitting off the side of the road. And even though you may have your cruise control set well within that safe traveling speed, you look down anyway, depending on your situation, hearing the sirens and seeing those flashing lights of first responders either brings a sense of relief or it might have you questioning your actions. The lights and sirens at U.S. Coast Guard Station Mayport are no different from search and rescue, maintenance, homeland security, and law enforcement coast guard station mayport is a tier above the others join me and photojournalist sierra erie as we hop aboard with the crew for qualifying of some of their tools for safety and defense so 240 shoot annual currency eight miles off ponte vedra we are transit out just make sure you're holding on to something uh, if you're inside just make sure you're away from the controls and remember, everyone's a lookout at all times. So if you see something, say something. That we're a PWCS level one unit. You don't see that everywhere in the Coast Guard, but that stands for Ports, Waterways, and Coastal Security. Because we have the Port of Jacksonville, because we have so many uh, high value assets and the cruise ships and stuff like that, that, that's what helped us get designated as a level one. So you're a level one search and rescue, law enforcement. You guys pretty much are everything on the water to somebody that would be in danger. Somebody, yeah. somebody that is in peril in the water, whether it's a broken motor or something you know, worse, I'm sure they're always excited to see you coming. Yeah, I would, I would think so too. Let me know when you're on target and tracking. On target and tracking. The M240, that's formidable. It's impressive. The business end really does mean business, but before that comes out, you said there are stages to contact. How does that work? Yeah, so the first step is officer presence. Exercise. That's our appearance, our demeanor, and just being there and letting people know, hey, this is a security zone, or this is a moving escort. All right, surface action to port. Step two, it would be uh, the warning shots, which we got the opportunity to shoot with the Remington 870 riot shotgun. On target tracking. Roger, commence fire. That should be about eye level for whoever's getting warning shots fired at them and then 25 to 50 yards off the bow that's just a general range where it should be effective and that they should be able to see the warning shots next shooter load and make ready zero two rounds of la51 loaded roger your surface action is the port 10 to 15 degrees off the water line shoot 25 to 50 yards off the vessel let me know when you're on target and tracking on target and tracking Roger, commence fire. Were the rounds effective? The rounds were effective. Were there any casualties? One seagull. One seagull, roger that. <laughs> Step three is disrupt. disrupt maybe hurting, shouldering. Them. Yeah, you're kind of riding alongside them and maybe they didn't get the hint with the warning shots, so you're kind of taking it, you're elevating it a little bit more. Step four is a disabling fire, and that's what we had the opportunity to shoot with the uh, 240 problem. That thing's capable of shooting anywhere from 600 to 650 rounds a minute. And what kind of round are we shooting? What would be the common? That's a 7.62 ball round. And then every fifth round is a tracer. So this would be similar to like a common gun that somebody would know be like an AK, like an AK-47? An AK will shoot a 7.62 okay. as well. Right. Yeah. And this is a, a 240? Yeah, this is M240 Bravo. Let's load this bad boy up. All right, so tonight you're at a half load. You got your target. For the most part, we'd be going five to seven round bursts. Okay. You get the honor of shooting at whatever rate of fire you want. So it's better to ride it on the way down and then pull the trigger. Okay. Because when you're going up, you're gonna be shooting too far, you're not gonna be having it. Okay. So it's better to have your rounds impact closer to us and then you can adjust from there. Okay. Target acquired. Commence fire. Misfire, misfire. Shoot the feed tray. Yep, now prop. Perfect. How many rounds did you fire? 100 rounds. Were they effective? They were effective, no were they, casualties. No casualties, roger that. Except the fish. Except for maybe a fish. <laughs> and awesome. That, and that yellow styrofoam thing took a beating. Yeah, that, that target took a beating. You probably hit it more than anybody else. 
Well, all right. Well, we need more tactical crewmen so we can get you that qualification real quick. <laughs> I'd be glad to sign up. And you got that one more pin that'll lock it up stationary. That's good right there. Sweet. That is impressive. <laughs> That's pretty fun, right? I mean, that is so much more than just an AK or anything. It's, um, I'm surprised at how much recoil it has even in a dead fire. Oh, yeah. I mean, the, the chamber here, there's so much that's moving inside of that to move all of this brass, not only that, to decouple the belt. That's impressive. It's cool to be on this side. I would not want to be on the other side. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That was such an experience. And, you know, we get afforded these things sometimes where you go out and you get to do things that the public doesn't. Yeah, and so our photojournalist was there, uh, yeah. Sierra. And so... She didn't want to fire at first, she, right? she, she was watching us. Like, oh. And so Sierra got up and... <laughs> and it was like... And she said the same thing. She was like, wow. Oh, and so, then she hit it because the ding oh, yeah. is a hit. Yeah. Yep. Right? Um, the dings that you hear are the brass as they hit the boat and then they collect uh. all that. And then, you know, the... If you're there, you can hear the difference between the round hitting the water and that that hits that styrofoam. The styrofoam has sort of a dead kind of thud to it, whereas when it hits the water, you get that splash. But it was cool to go out with those folks. You know, that is their level of last yeah. resort, you know, and he went through their different um, tactics of first, you know, just having a presence out there, having the lights on. Most people mm -hmm. see that and they're like, uh oh, you know, the Coast Guard's here and they are, you know, are watching, at least seeing what's going on. And of course, the next step is the elevated presence until you get to one of those points, as he was saying, the disabling fire. But everybody there, amazing to get a chance with folks that know, understand not only that boat and all the equipment, but the weapons that were on board. So just an honor to be, excuse me, to be able to be out there with Station Mayport. And um, and do something that I had never done, and just uh, yeah. I, th I think take people that need, to under, to its task. need to understand that uh, because because of where we are, um, there's a lot of drug interdiction that mm -hmm. goes on, and there's a lot of criminal criminal activity in the international waters. Which is why they're a tier above everybody else. I mean, because of the homeland security, because of as he calls it, all of the assets, you know, between the naval station as well as the cruise ships and things like that. So they are a uh, tier one team, and that really is a, it's a huge step from some of the other Coast Guard stations. Wow. Right. And so they're heroes too. I mean, we, we know the rescues, you know, we yeah. see all that as well. So this certainly was an angle we don't often yeah. get to see. All right.